I welcome those that are out in the uh, Facebook audience uh, to our live uh, Sunday morning service. The preaching this morning will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll start reading at verse 19. If you want to open your Bibles out there in, the, at, in Facebook, and uh, we're reading it here together in unison at the church. I'll read verse 19. We'll read 20 together. And if you want to follow along out there in the Facebook audience, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, starting to read the Word of God. I'll do 19 and 20 together and so on back and forth as we go uh, through it. Verse 19. For though I be from, <clears throat> free from all men, yet have I made myself servants unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, as I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye might obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as incertainly, that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Remain standing for prayer. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the precious word of God. In this marvelous passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul said he'd be all things, all men, might be able to save some. Oh, we want to identify with everybody because everybody needs to get saved. We don't want to be a castaway. We don't want to be useless. This sermon primarily is to born-again Christians. If we can get others saved. But Lord, I know out in the viewing audience and here in our church this morning, there's some unsaved people that need to be saved. Save that soul that's nearest hell this morning. Reclaim a backslider. Give Christians higher ground. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And you may be seated. Good crowd this morning. We're glad you're here. Glad to have Facebook friends uh, that are uh, tuned in also. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19, For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servants to all, that I might gain the more. You see, we as Christians, we're, we're servants to a lost and dying world. That's why we've been left here. My purpose of, of being here uh, is for the main reason. There are many auxiliary things that I do and things, but the reason a Christian is left here on earth once they're saved is so they can get others saved. Do you understand that? You say, that's just for pastors like you. Oh, no, no, no. It's not just for pastors. It's for every Christian. Every Christian is given the Great Commission. The Bible has told us, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody needs the gospel. Every Christian, a preacher. You say, but I thought a preacher is one uh, that oversees a church. That's not a preacher, that's a pastor. A pastor is an overseer. A preacher is a teller forth of good news. That is a man or a woman. That, that's not just, now let me say this, some of you don't agree with me, but the, the Bible clearly teaches that in order to be a pastor, you have to be a man. Now, do you know how I know that you have to be a man to be a pastor? Because the Bible says one of the prerequisites for a pastor is that they be the husband of one wife. So there's only someone, the only person that can be the husband of one wife is a man. 
So a man will oversee a church, but every Christian, a, a preacher, every woman, every man, every, everybody that's saved is a preacher. The word preach means to tell forth the good news. So we're supposed to, all of us, not just the pastor of the church, but all the members of the church, and and uh, uh, you, ought to be, you ought to belong to a local church. There are some people that don't believe in local church today. The word church, uh, there, there's no such thing as a TV church. A church is an assembly. You have to have bodies that are gathered together in an assembly. That's a, ecclesia, the Greek word ecclesia. It means an assembly. Uh, it could mean an assembly of some. It doesn't particularly mean it has to be a Christian church, but we think of the word church as a Christian church. But any kind of assembly, in Acts chapter 19, uh, there was a mob that had assembled. And they called it a mob there, but it was the word ecclesia, or the word that is interpreted uh, into the English language as a church. It could be mob, but it's an assembly. Uh, so we should belong to a local church. I encourage highly local church membership where you can... Uh, be a part of an organization that prays for one another and works for the salvation of the community that you live in and be able to send forth missionaries from your local church in the United States and around the world. So it says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servants unto all that I might gain the more. So what do we want to do? We want to gain souls. We want to get people saved. Every Christian, a soul winner. Every Christian, a missionary. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. Well, it wasn't hard for Paul to become a Jew. You know why? He was a Jew. <laughs> so it's not very hard to become a Jew if you are a Jew. But... Um, uh, uh, he wanted to. What it's saying here is, you want to identify with all people to show them the love of God, so that they can be saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? It means no matter where you work. It means no matter who your neighbor is. It means uh, whatever that I anybody that is a, that is a, a breathing, living human being. God made us very special. Did you know that you and I are made in the image of God? We have a soul. The rest of the animal kingdom and all of these animals that God has uh, given us, some to eat, the chicken, amen. Amen, Brother Donald. The chicken, amen. Brother Donald is the self-proclaimed chicken hawk. He loves chicken. I love chicken. His, uh, 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 Travis uh, now works at Popeye's, and and Travis used to work at um, churches. Now, you, uh, did, did did you know Travis that that Donald's favorite chicken is is a church's chicken? Hmm. Church's chicken. Everybody's opinions on chicken are different. So they are different, Travis. You're right. Yeah. Mine, the very best. That I could, I mean, there's there's no chicken like Mama's fried chicken. She don't fry it for me as much as she used to. Uh, but Mama's fried chicken, Grandma's fried chicken, that of course is the best at homemade fried chicken, you know. And just grab it as it's coming out of that greasy pan, amen. Or uh, uh, as Travis cooks it over there at Popeyes, when he when he's bringing that thing out and letting that grease drip off of there, and then put it on the plate, and boy, I'm gonna bite right into that thing. Uh, how on earth did I get talking about chicken? Oh, I want to tell you what my favorite chicken is. Uh, Colonel Saunders Kentucky Fried Chicken. Don't be shaking your head no, now. Colonel Saunders, original recipe. That's the chicken. For bought, is that right, Joanna? Okay. Let's just take a survey. Uh, I'm just going to take a survey from three, three chicken places. Uh, how many of you think that uh, Travis's Popeye's is the best? Okay, I got you caught one. You ain't going to put your hand up on your own chicken? Three. Uh, how, how many of you think uh, churches is the best? One. 
How many do you think the Colonel Saunders, Kentucky Fried? Oh, there's so many hands up. I can't even count them all. You're beat up. You guys, you see that? You guys mouthing off, doing all the talking. You see uh, the public, uh, the general public has spoken. Amen? <laughs> We've heard a colonel. <laughs> look at that sad look on his face. <laughs> oh, there's like a talk about chicken. <laughs> Well, I get back in the sermon. Travis, you need to tell them about Jesus over there at Popeyes. <laughs> you do. They won't tell them anyway if they don't listen. I used to tell them at the telephone company. I used to work for the telephone company. And I'd go into the uh, the last job I had at a telephone company was a control supervisor. I controlled the activities of eight crews in downtown Milwaukee area, and uh, uh, I would go into the uh, uh, cafeteria for a while I'd go in the cafeteria and sit down nobody would come sit by me and I'd, I'd do take a shower and I put on deodorant and all of that and that wasn't the reason they wouldn't come sit by me but they knew if they were going to sit by me that I was going to tell them about Jesus at, at. so what I did was I quit going to the cafeteria I had an hour lunch I used to walk uh, three blocks over to the rescue mission. That's before I worked at the rescue mission in, in Milwaukee. And I used to go there for an hour and witness to people. And they gave me a room over there. They gave me an office at the rescue mission. And I used to witness on my lunch hour. Or else I'd go out in the park and uh, walk around the park and talk to people about Jesus. Because you'd tell people wherever you are, where you were, they, they'd all don't want to. Not everybody's going to want to hear you, you understand. But you and I as Christians, we need to tell folks. Let's go on. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. And to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Verse 22, to the weak became I all as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. You see what I'm talking about? The whole thing about Christianity is getting people saved. There are people that are coming, they're sitting in here right now. My whole goal in life is to get those per people saved. I know people that are sitting in this auditorium right now. By their own omission, they're not saved. They keep coming back. I'm glad they do. I hope I'm glad they didn't get mad at me. They know I encourage. I tell them all the time they need to get saved. Every service, I talk to them personally at everything, because my goal and 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 my place in life is to get people saved. And if you're a Christian, how, how many of you are born again Christians in the church today? We got the majority of the people in here are saved people. If you're a born again Christian, your job. Uh, is to be a servant of your Lord Jesus Christ and get other people saved. The sad thing about it is most of you folks in our church and most of you Christians out there uh, in the viewing audience on Facebook, you never want a soul to Christ. You never got anybody saved. Uh, you know what? You say, uh, well, I might not ever got anybody saved, but I'm a good Christian. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not a good Christian unless you get people saved. That's the measuring stick. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that win his souls is wise. If you're saved and you don't get anybody saved, that's your job. If you're saved, your whole goal in life is to get others saved and to be ask God for His power and to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and tell others about Christ and get others to be saved. Yeah, I might save some. Verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake. The gospel's sake. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible says. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. <coughs> if you're not a Jew, you're a Greek. You say, I ain't no Greek. 
I'm this or I'm that. No, the word Greek, when it says Greek in the Bible, it means anybody that's not a Jew. Would you rather be called a Greek or a heathen? Call yourself a heathen then if you want. The heathens are those that aren't Jews. That's what they, they because the Jews are God's people. But, you see, you want to be a, a witness to everybody. The Jew and also the Greek. To the rich and the poor. Everybody. And it says here, and this I do for the gospel's sake. What's the gospel? It's very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're in 1 Corinthians 9 today. When you get to 1 Corinthians 15, it says this. Now, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Now let me go to 1 John, I mean 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it says the gospel that Paul said he received. How that Christ died according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel according to the Scriptures, the Word of God. And then He was buried. And He rose again from the grave the third day according to the Scriptures. You understand? That's the Gospel. <clears throat> That's my byword. That's what I talk about. Every chance I get. Every day of my life. Morning, noon, and night. I testify. People say... Some of you that are in here, right now I'm looking around. Some of you that are in here that aren't saved. I keep bothering you about the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. There's nothing like the gospel. I'm so glad I can keep telling it. Tell that old, old story, amen, over and over again. If you say you don't think much of the story of the gospel, you know what your problem is? You're going to hell. You're not saved. Anybody that's saved loves the gospel. Loves the gospel. You love Jesus. You're a born again Christian. You've repented. And every time you hear <coughs> about Jesus dying and rising again, you say, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! If you're sitting in here and, and, and you come in here, some of you are frowning. Something wrong with you. Let me just tell you this. The only thing that matters is Jesus Christ and Him crucified and risen again. You said, I'm tired of hearing it. Well, listen, <clears throat> you might be. You say, uh, this is the last time I'm coming to this church. That might be. But you're going to hear it while you're here, amen. amen. <laughs> you're going to hear about Jesus while you're here. <clears throat> I'll get a good shot at you. I'll, boom, I'm, I'm going to hit you with as much as I can. This I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. You see... <clears throat> What does it mean that I want to be a partaker of the gospel with you? I want you to be saved like I'm saved. I want you to be saved like Paul is saved. Because you're either saved or lost. The <clears throat> only thing that matters now is if you're a born-again Christian. That's all that matters. If you're a born-again Christian, your sins are forgiven and you're going to heaven. You don't have to go to hell. If you're not a born-again Christian, you're going to split hell wide open. Oh my, I don't want that to happen. You don't either, if you've got any sense. Partakers there are with you. Verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. You only got one winner in a race. My, my uh, son-in-law, who's a preacher, I prayed my daughter would marry preachers, and they both married preachers. Answer to my prayer. Uh, they both married preachers. And my son-in-law, Scott Kirshner, he's preaching right now. He's He's got a church in Port Orange, and he's out there and, and preaching. And uh, uh, he's preaching the same message I am, the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing it is that I have son-in-laws uh, that are that are preachers. How how wonderful that is, my my two his uh, pray especially his mother is gravely ill at the point of death, and uh, my two uh, other sons. One works in uh, grandsons. One graduated from college and he works for a big church in Atlanta, and uh, the other one is a student at at um, Florida State University. And there, I saw them both last night at dinner. Uh, because they came home because their grandmother is gravely ill. Scott's in pray for her. Her name is Joyce, Joyce Kirshner. Uh, they have a real crisis in their life now with her, I mean, at the doorstep of death, 
as we speak right now. She might have even died already. Uh, but um, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it says, uh, they that run all run a race. Now, Scott, yesterday morning, <clears throat> he works with, with track runners. They went out to Palm Coast, and he went out with the high school. He's a coach for not only does he pastor a church, but he's, he's, the, uh, uh, he's a running coach for Spruce Creek Cross Country. Now, he trains them people, and, and uh, not all of my grandkids have run, but most of them have. What they do, and uh, they run against that clock. They'd always tell me, oh, when I was practicing today, Grandpa, I got this, and, and I cut five seconds off my run. I cut. Why is it they want to cut five seconds and ten seconds off? Because when they run a race, what place do they want to get? First place. Forget all this stupidity of it doesn't matter who wins. It does matter who wins. I want to win. <clears throat> when, I, when I played football, we, we lost. I was, I was my other uh, grandson who's from Florida State. They have a good football team. They're playing a big game here. He says he's going to the game. They're, they're playing Alabama here in a week or two. I don't know when. It's going to be one of the biggest football games of the year. Alabama's rated number one in college football. Florida State is uh, rated number three. And, and they're going to play. I think they're playing in Atlanta, aren't they? I don't know. Anybody know anything about football here? I think that's where he said they're playing. But uh, Florida State definitely going to go out there and win that game. They just want to say they participated because if, uh, if number three beats number one, you know what that means? Number three then becomes number one. Now, if number 20 beats number one, they don't become number one. But if number three beats number one, they're number one, you see. So they want to win. And you say, Pastor, you ought not talk like that. You ought not talk about winning. The Bible talks about winning. I'm hitting the table and my phone's jumping. Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> I'm back. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Everybody's running, amen. They were, I don't know who won yesterday. I didn't ask Scott. We were talking about other things last night. And of course, his very sick mother. I wasn't talking about the winning of the race. But one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. You're running to win souls, friend. You're wanting to serve God. Forget about this world. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. There's lay way beyond the blue. Oh, the angels beckon me to heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I'll tell you why I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Because uh, I want to go to heaven and I want to take all that I can to heaven with me. And I'm in a race and I want to win the race. And if I win the race, what do I do? I win souls. My, my other grandson, Cameron. When he come back, he's in a he's a, he's in a mega church in uh, Atlanta, big church, and they'll have uh, this morning in church they'll have twenty thousand people. I mean, he he works for a mega church. In uh, at their church, at their mega church, the name of the church is Passion Church, and it's there in Atlanta. And there are probably twenty thousand there today. And uh, when they get when uh, in in their service today, when pe they get a bunch of people saved, and they got a big sign on the wall that says Jesus Christ or Jesus saves or something like that. And when someone gets saved, <laughs> they go up on the on the uh, on a ladder and they stick a light bulb in this sign, and it lights up when they get saved. You say that's crazy. He says, "Why do they count them? Because we're in a race." We used to do it. I was in a soul-winning church. I wasn't a pastor of the church, but I was part of the Central Baptist Church in, uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we used to use ping-pong balls. Every time someone got saved, we'd drop another ping-pong ball down. they put a light in over there. I don't care if it's lights representing souls. I don't care if it's ping-pong balls representing souls. I don't care if you put notches in your belt for winning souls. But it pays. Someone says, "I don't." Uh, people tell me, preachers and Pharisees, they say, "I don't think you ought to count who gets saved." You know why you don't want to count them? 
You ain't got any. <laughs> you don't win no souls, huh? Yeah. That's why you don't want to count. You ain't got any. You say, well, I think that. No. The Bible says, run, run the race. How are you going to, uh, uh, what happens? You win every time someone gets a soul. You win a soul. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. You Pharisees, I know God saves souls and I know it's the Holy Spirit, but He gave the Great Commission and God uses people. And Paul said, I'll be all things to all people by some means I can save some. And if that's what Paul was doing, that's what I'm going to do. And it's what you ought to do in our church and it's what you ought to do out there on the internet. Praise God. Every man that striveth, verse 25, for the mastery, is temperate in all things means you need to be careful you need you, you need to be temperate you need to you need to be careful as a Christian to be a soul winner and I'll tell you why uh, here's the thing that you have to be it says and they that uh, and they that do to obtain a corruptible crown that's I mean out there at uh, uh, Spruce Creek was running race, and, and Scott was out there, and they're running race in Palm Coast yesterday. And it says, and they to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. They maybe give someone a, a, a badge. Uh, what's, uh, uh, what's, the ultimate, uh, what's the ultimate goal for these uh, uh, runners and things? Uh, uh, it's Olympic gold, isn't it? I mean, that's that's the. I mean, a high schooler they want to they want to go to college, and the college one wants to go to go. I, I, I knew a, a good Christian, Ben Peterson. Uh, he won three gold uh, medals in the Olympics. Ben Peterson. Uh, he was a coach at Maranatha Baptist Bible College in Watertown, Wisconsin. I forget what school he was in, Indiana maybe, but but he was uh, uh, he was the uh, the best heavyweight wrestler in the world in uh, Olympic wrestling and he was uh, 198 pound was the limit you could be 198 pound and he was nothing but a muscle and and he won three gold medals now, I mean when he won a gold medal in the Olympics you had to be a college guy from America but he was wrestling the pros from uh, Eastern uh, Germany and from Russia and all of those, they, they, they were professionals. You know, uh, now our professionals can <clears throat> participate in the Olympics, but back then, a professional couldn't uh, uh, participate. But but he was the best. He was the best in the world. He's come testify for us down at the rescue mission, and uh, he's still. I think he's still working there teaching uh, wrestling. But it says uh, the world. <clears throat> they run a race or they have a contest or they box. Who who won that fight last night? I heard there was a big fight. Who won the fight last night between Meriwether and McGregor? Huh? Who? Meriwether won? What round? Huh? Tenth round? Fifteen round fight? Huh? They stopped the fight in the ninth. So now Meriwether's the world champion again. But that's for a corruptible crown. They probably give him a gold belt or something. I know one thing they gave him, from what they said, about $400 million. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> We're in a boxing match and, 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 and make almost a, uh, uh, half a billion dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> Crazy. I'm going to tell you something. I ain't, I ain't fighting. I couldn't fight anymore anymore. I couldn't whip a turtle, a slow-moving turtle anymore. But they do it for corruptible. But I win souls. Every soul I win and every soul you win, that's an eternal trophy. Amen? Amen. Love it. So there, uh, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight I, but as one that uh, uh, beateth the air. You know what that means? When they was fighting last night. Meriwether and, and uh, what was the other guy's name? Conor McGregor. McGregor. I never heard. I heard of Meriwether before. He'd been around quite a while. I think he was like 41 or something. The other guy's 29. 
29-year-old guy would have been whipped 41, but I guess he couldn't. I guess this guy's still pretty good at 41. But, you know, when they're going at it, evidently, Meriwether still had it. And uh, when uh, when McGregor went this way, Meriwether popped him in the chin, you know. And, and he popped him again. And that's what's talking about here. He says, I wasn't, I see, did you, did you, did, did you ever see a, 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 a boxing match? You wouldn't see it in a boxing match. You see it out on the parking lot at a bar when you see a drunk out in the back and, uh, and he's fighting and he's swinging and ain't hit nothing but air. Did you ever see something like that? That's craziness. He he knows about that. Is that what he does? We got a man in here right now that strikes air a lot when he fights. Uh, you got to lay it on their lip, man. You can't. <laughs> it ain't gonna it, it ain't gonna win. That's what it says here. I don't fight. I used to get my fights in. I him. I used to fight a lot. I don't know. In fact, my wife told me she's one of the reasons I married you, honey, because you was tough and you could protect me. I've not been in a fight since I've been saved. I haven't. I used to stand at the door of a bar and, and be what they I don't know. They still call them bouncers and throw, throw people out. I used to do that in a bar, uh, but I haven't been in a fight since I've been saved. But why? Why was I bouncer in the bar? Because when I struck out, I laid on their chin. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hit in the air. Uh, and God doesn't want to, but that was just carnal. Uh, the world championship that Meriwether won last night again. It might be pretty, it might be a, probably a great big buckle belt he puts around him. Isn't that what it is? They show it on there. Probably gold or whatever it is. But I therefore so run, I'm going to win. Not as uncertainly, so fight I. God believes in fighting. Don't tell me you don't believe in fighting. Not as one that beateth the air, laid on his chin. But I keep, but it says, but I keep under my body of being uh, in subjection. That by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I've seen this. Let's get back to the Meriwether McGregor fight. I seen the newscast, and uh, and and that McGregor, he, he had his nose up to Meriwether's nose. He, I said, I, I told my grandson, uh, I didn't know who was going to win. I says, I don't like that a guy running his mouth off. Just save it for the fight. And let's see what you got. You know, uh, it ain't no use sticking your nose up against nobody. Talk don't mean nothing. You know. And uh, but I guess and McGregor just stood there and the Mer I mean Merriweather just stood there and McGregor. <coughs> but evidently I'm a, I'm gonna put it up on the YouTube today and look at it a little bit. But uh, that's a but what he did is if you're 41 I, I I like to use human examples. This is a good one to use because it was a fight last night World Championship. You see the way a 41 year old can beat a 29 year old. Is uh, uh, I keep under my body under subjection. I mean, he looked good to me. He, in fact, he looked like he's built better than the other guy from what I just seen of him. He had his body under subjection, and he was trained, and and he could whip a 29-year-old world champion. That I don't think he had had he ever had the other guy ever lost a fight. Had McGregor ever lost a fight before? Probably not. And uh, but anyway, how much more? Merriweather trained and the best in the world. What was he? Middleweight, featherweight, something like that. He wasn't no heavyweight. I know they looked too skinny to be. They weren't no heavyweight. But anyway. It was it was important for him. He wor he won a worldly crown, but you and I are winning souls for eternity. Do you understand? Do you understand how much more important it was for you and I to get somebody saved than Meriwether to win the world championship? Do you see what's really important? Millions and millions and millions, and some even said on TV, maybe a billion people watched that fight last night. I don't know. I didn't watch it. 
I don't even know who won it until someone just told me here in church this morning. Do you see the importance of getting people saved? And I need to keep under my body in subjection, at least at any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I'm done. There goes my phone again. Are you a castaway? What's a castaway? Somebody don't win any souls. If you're here and you're saved, some of you have been saved 10, 15, 20 years, and you, you've, you've not won a soul yet. You're not worth much for God. I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you that Paul said he'd be all things, all folks, that by some mind he might get someone saved. But if you're not getting people saved, you're a worthless Christian. I'm just... I just taught you the Bible today, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm not mad at you. I know you'd like me to preach some sugar stick, sugar stick sermon, praise the Lord thing. I like to preach those. You like to hear them. But you're not, you're not worth much for God unless you're getting others saved. You get busy at it here in our church that are saved. You get busy telling something about Jesus. You get busy over there at Popeye's. You get busy wherever you are, wherever your neighborhood is, wherever you shop. You're in a race. You're in a fight. Quit beating the air. Get them on the chin and win a soul. Amen? Win the race. Win the race. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for First Corinthians 9. Heavy stuff. I got to preach it because it's in the Bible. I don't want to offend anybody. I'm your friend in church. I'm your pastor and your friend. I'm your friend out there. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Be a soul winner for Jesus. Here in church today, you see, I'm a saved person. I'm 100% sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Would you slip your hand up? All right, God bless you. I'm going to put your hands down. You're here in church and you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I want you to pray for me. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I want you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up? Just slip it up. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Got a lot of hands raised in church. You want to put your hands down. Lord, thank you for these precious ones in church. You've died for the sins of the world. And each one of these that have raised their hand, and we've had a number of them in church this morning. That's the Holy Spirit spoke to you, dear one. You can be saved. We're going to pray the sinner's prayer. You just have to repent. Recognize you can't save yourself. But you call upon the Lord. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to get saved today here in church you out there to YouTube in uh, Facebook you need to get saved today why don't you trust the Savior why don't you repent God speaking to your heart out there in the viewing audience the internet would you get saved today I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer and you that are here in church I want you to pray and you that are out there in the viewing audience on Facebook, would you pray? This is the prayer. Pray it if you mean it in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you, as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed here in church. You say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I meant it in my heart. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see it. Raise it up. I prayed it and I meant it in my heart today. I prayed it and I meant it in my heart today. I prayed it and I meant it in my heart today. Lord, we thank you for these. We've had six precious souls that have trusted Christ in church today. I don't know how many of you did out there in the viewing audience. I hope many of you did. They indicated it by the upraised 
hand here in church, but you can contact me and let me know, and I'll be able to help you. Lord, thank you for these that have trusted Christ today. And Lord, there's many others of us that are here, and I'm here saying that I don't do all I could. I'm not running a race as hard as I could. I'm not in the fight as good as I could for souls. I get some, but I should get more. And we pray that each one of us that named the name of Christ here in our church and out through the viewing audience, that we would be no more diligent to run the race and win. Win those precious souls. Help us to do it, Lord, because it's the only thing that matters. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. We can say with Paul, I'll do all things to all folks that I by my some means save some. Help us to be soul winners for you, dear Lord. Thank you now for this service. Thank you for the food you provide for us. Bless our fellowship as we have this meal together after church. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, folks out there on Facebook, we're glad you tuned in. We'll see you tonight around 6.15.